Now, Miss Mittens tells me you've been giving her a hard time. What's this all about? Oh, no, Rabbi. No, no. Not in this season of love and joy where all of us can set aside our petty differences and pretend that we don't hate the holidays and each other. So it's in this spirit, on behalf of our TV family, myself, Mr. Lobo, Puddles, Mike Bernati, uh, whoever that is, Miss Mittens, and Miss Mittens Rabbi. Hello, that's me, Rabbi Joe. We wish you all Happy Hanukkah. A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And, and from, from all, all of us to, to all of you, Happy, happy holidays. holidays. From Cinema Insomnia and OSI 74. Now, you're not going to put uh, Christmas decorations on Miss Mittens again, are you? Oh, no. No, Mr. Lobo realizes now that that's wrong. Oh, what was that, Miss Mittens? Oh, did we forget Kwanzaa? Well, I think it's implied. I don't know. Maybe we should start over? No, no, it's good enough. I it's good enough. Maybe I, one more got take. got a long, long trip oh, really home serious? and start. I know you got a cab waiting and everything, but maybe yeah, I think we got to do What was that, Miss Mittens? Now, don't you get started. Yeah, no, we got to go. Get right. ready for Hanukkah here. Under my power, look into the hypnotic eye. Time now to enter Mr. Lobo's domain. Look out! Open your mind to the possibility that they're not bad movies, just misunderstood. You're not dreaming. You're watching cinema insomnia. You're not dreaming. You're watching cinema insomnia. Tonight's feature is presented in that famous holiday party starter, Jingle Rama. Whenever you hear this sound. Drink a shot of your favorite holiday beverage. Mr. Lobo is drinking that uh, time-honored favorite, horse and noggin. Oh, all right. Who put the mosquito larva in Mr. Lobo's horse and noggin? Don't you people know there's a crazy sea monkey virus going around? <sighs> Half the crew is sick. And they're all angry with Mr. Lobo for making them work tonight. They don't seem to understand that we artists have a responsibility. We must sacrifice our own personal comfort for the good of the show. How many of you good people out there right now are suffering from sore throats, <clears throat> coughs, runny noses, Block sinuses, explosive diarrhea, and are otherwise in need of a bad movie with good company on Christmas Eve. It's our job to entertain you people, and by God, the show must go on. Even though Mr. Lobo uh, has a little tickle in his throat right now, <clears> that's <throat> Still no excuse. Tonight, we are going to bring you everyone's favorite holiday classic. Chud? Cannibalistic humanoid underground dwellers? For our Christmas show? No, 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 no. This will not do. Luckily, Mr. Lobo's been saving this for the staff Christmas party. Smithy says we can watch Home Alone. It's got that different party monster. Home Alone? 
What kind of Christmas movie is that? Let's, let's ring in the Yuletide by watching some spoiled brat maim and torture a couple of hapless burglars all night. It's like the Saw holiday special. No, no, Mr. Lobo is calling McCulkin on that malarkey and is putting his, putting his black boot down. We're not watching that. <clears throat> Mr. Lobo has right here a bona fide holiday classic for the whole family based on Charles Dickens' classic novel with no cannibals and no grown men being shot in the face with nail guns. A Christmas Carol. Wow, way to flush this show even further down the toilet. What, no vacation slides? It's got ghosts in it. Anyway, it works. Countess Blood Sugar, our plucky Gen Z intern, everyone. All right, just uh, go and spool that up for the fans at home. No, I'm good. What? What do you mean, you're good? Just put it on. Fine. Put something on for you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are you trying to do? Get a shutdown? Yes. I feel like crap. I want to go home. Ugh. All right. Why don't you go home and take care of that bloody discharge coming from your nose and throat? Mr. Lobo knows how to thread a projector. Let's see here. Pop this one off. All right. We put ours on. It just slides on this bracket like this. Lock it into place. Let's see here. Uh, the bunny goes around the log and under the tree. It's just like riding a bicycle. Cinema Insomnia now proudly presents the 1935 version of a holiday classic, A Christmas Carol. Let's see here. And then it goes uh, through the picket fence, across the brisket, double Windsor. <sighs>
Scrooge and Marley's, I believe. Yes, sir. Is there anything I can do for you, sir? Well, if it is quite convenient, I should like to speak with a member of the firm. Mm -hmm. You, uh, you wish to see me, I presume, sir? Yes. Have I the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? Mr. Marley's been dead these seven years. Oh. Dead as a doornail. Died seven years ago. It's very nice. Oh. We took the liberty of calling on you at your chambers, Mr. Scrooge, uh, thinking that you would have finished business for the day, but we failed to make anyone here. That's not surprising. I'm the only person who lives there. Why? Consequently, we have called here. At this festive season of the year, Mr. Scrooge, it seems more than usually desirable to make some slight provision for the poor and destitute who suffer terribly at this present time. Many thousands are in want of common necessaries. Hundreds of thousands are in want of common comfort, sir. Are there no prisons? Yes, plenty of prisons. The union workhouses are still in operation, eh? They are still. I wish I could say they were not. Warlaw and the treadmill are in full vigor, then, eh? Both very busy, sir. Oh, very very early, sir. I thought from what you said that something had occurred to interfere with them in their useful course. Very very early, sir. Very glad to hear it. Under the impression that they scarcely furnish Christmas cheer of mind and body for the multitude, some few of us are endeavouring to raise a fund to buy the poor of London meat and drink and means of warmth. We choose this time because this is the time of all others when want is keenly felt and abundance rejoices. Now, what shall I put you down for? Nothing. Nothing? Oh, oh I see. You wish to be anonymous. I wish to be left alone, sir. Since you ask me what is my wish, that is my answer. I don't make many myself at Christmas. I can't afford to make a lot of idle people many. I hope to support the institutions we've just mentioned. They cost enough. People are badly off, they'd better go there. Many can't go there. Many would rather die. Well, if they'd rather die, they'd better do it. And decrease the surplus population. Good evening, sir. Allow me to express my regret, sir, if I have said anything. Good evening. <laughs> oh. Mr. Lobo's getting a reverend mother of a headache. Maybe it's from watching that beat up film print. Cinema Insomnia will be right back with more scratchy goodness of tonight's feature, A Christmas Carol. Brought to you by our sponsor, Non-aspirin. Yes, new non-aspirin. With just two tablets, just two tablets, two tap, quite simply, I'm in trouble with this childproof cap here. Two, two just, uh, see what's happening here. We'll be right back. Hey everybody, it's Danny Roebuck. I'm at Shankweiler's Drive-In and I just wanted to say a very happy holidays to Mr. Lobo, his team of crazy Loboites, and all of you who, who watch uh, the, the show. Uh, God Cinema bless you. Insomnia. What's it called? Cinema Insomnia. I'm sorry, I fell asleep. I'm, oh, Cinema Insomnia. No, I'm just kidding. Cinema Insomnia. I mean, you're watching it, right? So you know I'm talking to you. So you're watching Cinema Insomnia, Mr. Lobo, and your robot? And you Who's that? The taste of nuts and honey, Mr. Scrooge. Ah! Come back. There are things to do. Oh, Mr. Scrooge, Honey Nut Cheerios, it's Christmas. My customary gruel will suffice, thank you. Yeah, but Honey Nut Cheerios blends golden honey and crunchy nuts. I said, did you say honey and nuts? It's a Merry Christmas, Mr. Honey Scrooge. Nuts.
Merry Christmas, Mr. Lobo and Miss McKinnon's. <sighs> Few books have inspired more movie adaptions than Charles Dickens' ghostly Christmas tale, A Christmas Carol. By far the best and most famous version is the 1951 Alistair Sim version of A Christmas Carol. It's the most remembered and the most loved, but it's not in the public domain, somehow. That means we'd have to pay a royalty to show it to you tonight, and it just so happens that Mr. Lobo's producer, Alan N. Smithy, is a cantankerous miser as well. So instead, we bring you the 1935 Seymour Butts version Very funny, guys. The 1935 Seymour Hicks version of A Christmas Carol. Now this version, it's black and white, does not feature Mr. Magoo, Animated Ducks, Captain Picard, The Muppets, Bill Murray, or a creepy animated Jim Carrey. So Mr. Lobo thinks we're going to need to recommit ourselves to tonight's feature by taking the insomniac's oath. Please assume the position and repeat after Mr. Lobo. I, as an initiated member of the sleepless nights of insomnia, do solemnly swear to watch the movie, the whole movie, and nothing but the movie. So help me, Mr. Lobo. You may stand down. Oh. Thanks, Babs. No problem. And now we return to Seymour Hicks. I mean, no problem but mute. And now we return to Seymour Hicks in tonight's feature, A Christmas Carol. May I inquire, Mr. Cratchit, what you're doing with that shovel full of coal? Why, I beg your pardon, mm. sir, but the outer office is intensely cold, and my fire... No, no, your fire! I should have said your fire, sir. Yes, sir. It shows symptoms of going out, and I thought I might venture to replenish it with a small quantity of coal. Yes. Yeah. Well, of course, you know, it's very evident to me, you know, Mr. Cratchit, that you and I left apart. Oh, oh I see no help for it, sir. You don't pay for the coal, so you can afford to be reckless. Therefore, very evident to me, sir, you know, that my interest is not your interest. Nor my welfare, your welfare. Get on with your work, sir. That'll keep you warm enough. I'm not cold. Why should you be? And I am your senior <coughs> by a great many years, I fancy. All about a small shovel full of coal. And none of your mumbling, you know, none of your mumbling. You, you have a wife and family to support, I understand. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How many children have you got? Around half a dozen, sir. Three boys and three girls. Tut, tut, tut. Can I afford a wife? Yes, sir. Eh? Uh, I mean, no, sir. Have I any children? I don't know, sir. Eh? No. No, sir. How much am I constrained to pay you a week for your services? Fifteen shillings, sir. Ah, be to your interest, sir, to see that you're worth it. Uncle. And God save you. Bah! Humbug. Christmas a humbug? You can't mean that, I'm sure. I do mean it, sir. What right have you to be merry? What reason have you to be merry? You're poor enough. Come then. What right have you to be dismal? What reason have you to be morose? 
You're rich enough. Ah. Humbug. Oh, don't be cross, Uncle. How can I help being cross, sir, when I live in such a world of fools as this is? A merry Christmas. What's Christmas time to you, sir? It's a time for paying bills without money. Time for finding yourself a year older. Uh, not a penny richer. If I had my way, sir, every fool who goes about saying Merry Christmas should be boiled with his own pudding and buried with a stake of olive to his heart. He should. Uncle! Nephew, you keep Christmas your way. Let me keep it in mind. Keep it? But you don't keep well, it. Well, let me leave it alone, then. Much good has it done you. Much good will it ever do you. It's the only time I know of in the long calendar of the year when men and women seem by one consent to open their shut hearts freely. And therefore, though it's never put a scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, I believe it has done me good and will do me good. And I say, God bless it. Here, here. Here, here. Mr. Cratchit, if I hear another word from you, you'll keep your Christmas by losing your situation. Dear, 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 dear. Quite a powerful speaker, sir. I wonder you don't go into Parliament. Don't be angry, Uncle. Come, dine with us tomorrow. I'll see you. But why? Why? Why did you get married? Because I fell in love. Because I fell in... Good evening. You never came to see us before, that happened. Why give that as a reason for not coming now? Good evening, sir. But I want nothing from you. I ask nothing of you. Well, you won't get it, so you won't be disappointed, will you? We've never had a quarrel to which I've been party. So why not let us part friends? Good evening, sir. Well, I'm sorry with all my heart to find you surrounded you. But I've made the trial in homage to Christmas, and I'll keep my Christmas humor to the last. So a Merry Christmas, Uncle. Good evening, sir. And a Happy New Year. You're a noisy devil. That's what you are, sir. Merry Christmas, Bob Gretchen. And the same to you, sir. And many of them. And not forgetting your good lady, Mrs. Fred. Thank you, Gretchen. A Merry Christmas to you. A Merry Christmas. Ready and willing to quit your work, I notice. It's seven o'clock, sir. That clock's fast. By the way, I... I suppose you'll want all day off tomorrow, eh? Well, sir, if, if, if it's quite convenient... It isn't convenient. It isn't fair. If I was to stop half a crown for it, oh, you'd be mightily ill-used, I'd be bound, wouldn't you? Don't think I'm ill-used, do you? When I have to pay a whole day's wages. No work. It only happens once a year, sir. That's a pretty excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. Well, I, I suppose you've got to have it. Yeah, there's the key. You see, sir, that you're here all the earlier next morning. <coughs> no! No, I did not forget my duties. I did not neglect the insomniac's oath. I came back here <coughs> to water you, okay? And to maybe perhaps persuade you to join me in the studio to watch the rest of A Christmas Carol. Oh, that's right, Miss Mittens. You're Jewish. I, I, I've just been having a hard time concentrating. <coughs> What do you mean, go home? <coughs> Look, just because the crew put a, a little bit of brine shrimp in Mr. Lobo's horse and nog, and that does not mean that I've got the sea monkey virus. You watch too much cable news. <coughs> look, look, look. <coughs> would, a, would a sick person take a handful of potting soil like this and put it in his mouth? And would a sick person try to wash it down? With rusty hose water. Was that vodka? Just checking. 
<laughs> um, while Mr. Lobo vomits in Miss Mitten's watering can, why don't you do a little holiday shopping of, with our sponsors? <laughs> Hi, it's Rich Coase, and I just want you to know that my <clears throat> boss, Sven Gulli from ETV, and I wish you very, very happy holidays and hope that 2023 will be a great year for all of us. Anybody know where I can get some of those voodoo doll pins? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Mend your ways, Gary. Mend your ways before it's too late. Boy, do you know Mr. Tittlewhistle, the grocer's? Yes, sir. And have you seen that big, big bag of Walker's Crisp potato snack in his window? Yes, sir. For you and all your friends? Yes, sir. Do you think it'll still be there this fine festive morn? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're wrong, because I bought it yesterday. Ah, humbug. He was the greediest man alive. It's Ebenezer Scrooge. Until the night he met someone extraordinary. Hello. The Muppet Christmas Carol. I'll drink to Mr. Scrooge, even though he is odious, <laughs> stingy, and badly dressed. Humbug. <laughs> Oh, there goes Mr. Humbug, there goes Mr. Grin. Do you think it's safe for us to be up here? Ah! It's a game of prize for being mean. The winner would be him. Yes, Mr. Cratchit. If you please, Mr. Scrooge. The bookkeeping staff would like to have an extra shovel full of coal for the fire. Where is it frozen? How would the bookkeepers like to be suddenly... It's Charles Dickens' classic tale, Whoa! as only the Muppets can tell it. It's good to be heckling again. It's good to be doing anything again. Filled with holiday warmth. Hey, 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 like the lamp, not the rat, like the lamp, not the rat. And Christmas spirit. Scrooge. Jacob Molly. <laughs> Scary stuff. Hey, should we be worried about the kids in the audience? No, it's all right. This is culture. This is the movie to see, to share, ah! to cherish with someone you love. Thank you for making me a part of this. Walt Disney Pictures presents, from Jim Henson Productions, The Muppet Christmas Carol. God bless us, everyone. Whatever. Hi, I'm Michael Verratti. And I'm Brendan Haley. Wishing Mr. Lobo and Cinema Insomnia Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. It's not a bad season, it's just misunderstood. What did he say? <coughs> no, I did not finish my Christmas shopping, Miss Mittens. This show is Mr. Lobo's gift to the world. Yes, I know that's really sad. You hush. You just want me to go home because you think I'm going to get you sick. Uh, and now, English actor Seymour Hicks portrayed Ebenezer Scrooge <laughs> in tonight's 1935 version of A Christmas Carol. <laughs> uh, he, he was also in the 1913 silent version. <laughs> Both uh, original releases of the film were originally titled simply originally Scrooge. Cinema. <laughs> Cinema. Cinema Insomnia now returns you to tonight's feature. Where's your watering can? Good night, sir. And a Merry Christmas. Bah! Humbug!
wait you to go. And it weighs a bit, I can tell you, too. A Merry Christmas, sir. Ah, uh, humber. Yes, that's a prize, sir. That's a prize, Merry Christmas to you, my boy. Thank you, sir. Same to you, sir. Pardon the tissues. Mr. Lobo is uh, fighting some sort of bug. <coughs> oh, ah, oh. oh, there he is. There he is. Gotcha, you little bugger. Nasty one, too. Now, you might not have a creature like this living inside your nasal cavity, but if you take an ordinary <clears throat> piece of facial tissue, just like this, and tie it up with a string, uh, not seen here. Maybe you could use uh, a rubber band from your dad's desk, like this. You could make a, a scary, spooky ghost. Like that. And if you use a used tissue, it'll even stand up, just like that. Ugh. Hmm. Cinema Insomnia. We'll be right back. Happy Christmas, Mr. Lobo, and Cinema Insomnia from Lord James Wellington III and Chicago All-Star Wrestling. It's Christmas Eve, Mr. Scrooge. I'm going home to my family now. Merry Christmas. Christmas, bah, humbug. <laughs> All Christmas means to me is a nasty old cold. You should take NyQuil, sir. NyQuil? What's NyQuil? Nighttime cold medicine from Vicks. Got to go now. NyQuil? Yes, Mr. Scrooge. NyQuil relieves sniffles, sneezes, stuffy nose, scratchy throat, coughs and aches and pains. NyQuil relieves your major cold symptoms for hours, so it helps you get the rest you need. Christmas. <laughs> Mr. Scrooge. And he's happy. They said you had a cold, sir. Oh, I feel much better. I took NyQuil last night. Merry Christmas, sir. Oh, Merry Christmas to you, Bob Cratchit, and all your wonderful family. Merry Christmas to one and all. Vix NyQuil, the one thing to take for your cold. Christmas, a time for celebration, a time of goodwill to all men. All that is, except...
except one. Those of us with means should make some slight provision for the poor and destitute. Ebenezer Scrooge, a man whose contempt for others... Mr. Cratchit! ...is matched only by his greed and lust for wealth. Christmas comes for once a year, sir. Poor excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. But Scrooge is about to be taught a lesson he'll never forget. You will be haunted by three spirits. I think I'd rather not. Charles Dickens' immortal tale is brought to life as you've never seen it before. I am the ghost of Christmas past. You will see yourself. Ebenezer Scrooge! You are more worthless and less fit to live than millions like this poor man's child. I fear you more than any specter I've seen. I will not be the man I must have been but for this visitation. Why show me this if I am past all hope? Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, with an all-star cast including Frank Finlay, David Warner, Susanna York, Edward Woodward, Nigel Davenport, Joanne Wally, and George C. Scott as Ebenezer Scrooge. A Christmas Carol. Merry Christmas to everybody, and a happy new year to the world! Hello, my name is Chuck Chin, and I'm a Sinsomniac. You know, Sinsomnia is a threefold disease. Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. Thank the universe for Cinema Insomnia. That's funny. Mr. Lobo wasn't expecting anyone. <laughs> Hello? Ah, bonjour, Lobo. That's Mr. Lobo. Who's this? Who is this? Don't you recognize the voice of your old friend and mentor? Creature Features host, Bob Twilkin. Bob? You don't sound like yourself at all. In fact, you sound terrible. What? Why, you no good rotten. You think it's easy to make phone calls from beyond the grave? Why does your ghost have an accent? Oh, that. Yeah, I have a ghost cold. You know, or, or something. <laughs> a chew. You know, <coughs> Mr. Lobo's uh, a bit under the weather himself. Uh, we've all been uh, passing it around here at work. <coughs> uh, yes. Yes, I... Uh... Like I care. Hey, listen, I called to ask you one thing. What in the hell do you think you're doing? What do you mean, Bob? What do I mean, Bob? I'm ashamed to know you right now. What kind of highbrow ratings death are you stinking up the airwaves with this time? It's a Christmas carol. They wanted to show Chud, you know, cannibalistic, humanoid, humanoid underground, underground dwellers. dwellers. Of course they did. Because that's what the horror fans want to see. Mutant bombs coming out of the manholes, eating all the people. On Christmas Eve? Especially on Christmas Eve. You're a horror host. For you, it's freaking Halloween every night, all right? Put on the giant monster flick. Fans will love it. Bob, I'm not just a horror host. <coughs> I'm a movie host. I'm not just a sad clown. I'm a funny clown. I'm not a whore. I'm a sex worker. Listen to yourself, you dope. You know, I'm not feeling very well right now. Boo fing who And right now I'm just thinking that maybe maybe this whole thing this whole thing is a bad idea playing lip service to a bunch of 
crummy old movies. It's undignified. Uh, hold on a second. Cinema Insomnia now returns you to Charles Dickens' yuletide answer to Gothica, A Christmas Carol. All right, now where were we? Like I was listening? You were saying something about using your lips to service a bunch of crummy old movie guys. <coughs> Did I say that out loud?
It's obvious you don't have your act together, Lobo. I can't believe you'd betray your horror fans out there with this Christmas Carol piece of merde. If you want to stay in this business, you've got to play Monster Ball. Or Roller Ball. What do you mean by that, Bob? I have no idea. It was supposed to be a play ball analogy or something. Just shut up and listen. I mean, you play horror and sci-fi. And knock off that Bob crap. It's Mr. Twilcom to you, you little punk. Do I go calling you No. Only John Stanley calls me that and clinic nurses and bill collectors. Look, did you just say Mr. Twilcom? That's not even your name. <coughs> Look, I know it's not a horror movie, but it's... It's Christmas, but it's got ghosts in it. But it's got ghosts in it? You've disgraced a prestigious and highly paid profession of horror hosting. I talked to some of the other prominent horror hosts today and they're all pissed. They said they're going to call you up tonight and give you what for. They all want you to get out of their business. <laughs> Who wants me out of the business? <coughs> what business? Horror hosting? That doesn't even make any sense. Shouldn't it be hosting horror? I don't want to name names, but let's just call them hosts of horror films past, present, and future. Now I have to go, Lobo. <coughs> Matlock is coming on here in heaven, and you know how us old farts love that stuff. Okay, okay. Uh... You take care. Bye, Bob. Beg it. Wow! For those of you who don't recognize that famous voice, that was former Creature Features host and <coughs> Mr. Lobo's old mentor, Bob Wilkins, with a warning from beyond for Mr. Lobo. Now here's a... Now here... Now here's an important message for the rest of you. <laughs> Princeton Vice here. Are you staying up late to see if reindeers can fly? Are you suffering cinema insomnia? Have a scary Christmas. For systems from Atari, the video game that lets you help E.T. get home, just in time for Christmas. Happy Holidays from Atari. Tiny Tim have warmed the hearts of millions the world over. Now hear Tiny Tim and all the other wonderful people in this unforgettable story speaking their immortal lines as the most joyous of all Dickens classics reaches new heights of greatness on the screen. So a Merry Christmas to you anyway. Good evening. And a Happy New Year. Good evening. Humbug! 
It's all humbug, I tell you. <laughs> Uh, flu has taken a turn for the worse. Please excuse the bottles and the facial tissues and the buckets and everything, but don't you worry. Mr. Lobo is still determined to host this movie for you, no matter how many viscous fluids are up from my body. <laughs> Now it's time for Trivia in Cinema. You know, most TV shows, if they've been on for more than a few seasons, run out of ideas. And eventually, inevitably, do a obligatory Christmas Carol episode. Uh, the Odd Couple, Bewitched, WKRP in Cincinnati, Roswell, Black Adder, The Flintstones, Family Ties, Married with Children, Tales from the Crypt, Hannibal, The Walking Dead, and so many others. This is a telltale sign that a series has slurped the poodle, uh, that's apparently an industry term, meaning the point where a show is past its prime and headed for disaster and inevitable cancellation. Oh, what's that ringing sound? The phone. It must be the phone, yes. Must answer the phone. Excuse me. Hello? Hello, Monsieur Lobo. It is I, Vampira, the hostess of Horror Past. See my hideously curvaceous body! Am I not sexy and scary at the same time? Oui, oui! You have been a naughty host, Mr. Lobo! Um, well, uh, I, I am uh, uh, three quarters aroused. Um, let me uh, call you back after the movie. Ma'am. Well, Ebenezer Scrooge, for only you can see me. What you want with me? Much. Who <laughs> are you? In life, I was your partner, Jacob Marley. In life? Why do you trouble me? It is required of everyone that the spirit within him should walk abroad among his fellow men. And if that spirit goes not forth in life, it is condemned to do so after death. My spirit never walked beyond the narrow limits of our money-changing hall. So I cannot rest. I cannot stay. I cannot linger anywhere. You... Are fettered. Why? I wear the chain I forged in life. I made it link by link. Would you know the weight and length of the coil you bear yourself? Speak words of comfort to me, Jacob Marley. Speak words of comfort. Comfort? I have 
none to give. I am here to warn you, to save you, if that be possible. To warn? To save me? From what? From such a fate as mine, to wander through the world and witness what I cannot share, but might have shared on earth and turn to happiness. But you were always a good man of business, Jacob. Business! Mankind should have been my business. Charity, forbearance, benevolence, all were my business, as they should be yours. Now heed me, for my time is short. You will be haunted by three spirits. Without their visit, you cannot hope to shun the path I tread. You shall behold the visions of a Christmas past, a Christmas present, and a Christmas yet to come. Expect the first when the clock strikes midnight tonight. Molly! Look to see me no more. Molly! Um. Here to show you the things that have been. Look back beyond the gulf of vanished years. We interrupt your regularly scheduled program to bring you our often bumped snack bar segment of cinema insomnia. I'm not Mr. Lobo. I'm actually the president of the network, Alan N. Smithy. Now a lot of people think that Mr. Lobo and Alan Smithy have a passing resemblance. They're wrong, of course. I'm here with the lovely and a talented bright new, no, no, that's you, that's you. Bright new star of OSI 74, Sally, the zombie cheerleader. She has a program with us that we're very excited about, uh, Sally, Tell us about your show on OSI 74. Oh, so I host a show called Sally the Zombie Cheerleader School of Horror, where I talk about horror movies and I critique them. And I try to teach the fleshies to get along with zombies and monsters because we only just want to hug fleshies. We're not bad. It's uh, true. Wait a second. Don't uh, zombies eat fleshies? That's a horrible, vicious rumor. So you were, were you hugging that person's brains out in the alley in front of the studio? I was trying to keep it warm. Okay, well, I guess we're, we're showing, we're representing right now humans and zombies together, uh, and we're going to be making a snack for the holidays. Do zombies celebrate Christmas? Well, it depends on what we eat, I mean, hug. So if you're, if you're hugging someone who believes in Christmas, then you might that some of that might be passing through you? I get all that holly jolly goodness through me, yep. All right, tonight we're going to be making a snack called Hot Dr. Pepper. It's a holiday favorite. You ever heard of this, Hot Dr. Pepper? Dr. Pepper, he's hot, isn't he? Extra spicy, because he's peppery. Uh, <laughs> well, there's no pepper in Dr. Pepper, and actually, like Frankenstein's monster, it's actually that the, the monster is not, the, the doctor's not the monster. 
The doctor's the doctor and the monster's the monster, right? But we're drinking the doctor. We're we're not drinking the doctor, we're drinking the doctor's beverage. We're drinking the monster. So this then. is the this is this is this is Dr. Pepper's beverage. So we're not drinking the monster, we're drinking the doctor's beverage. It's the doctor's liquid. Yes. He's not peppery. A, he's yeah, he's not peppery. There's no pepper, and I don't think there's peppers. There's no pepper or peppers in Dr. Spicy? Pepper. He's spicy. It is a little spicy. It is a little spicy, but not too spicy. Uh, so anyhow, this is a beverage that uh, we used to drink when we worked back in local television. Um, Bob Wilkins was our ad man, and uh, you may know him as a horror movie host. He's a horror host like you. Oh, hey. He hosted a show called Creature Features, and he also sold our advertising when, uh, when we worked in local TV. And when we would do holiday parties, Bob had his own variation of hot Dr. Pepper. Uh, now, it was extremely popular in the 60s and the 50s. Do you, it, were you alive in the 50s and 60s, or were you still dead in the 50s? Uh, I think I was probably, well, yeah, I was probably dead back then. But Dr. Pepper has to be really old if he was back around then. Well, uh, yeah, he was, uh, he, he, he's been around, he's seasoned, he's seasoned. That's why it's peppery. So anyhow, um, we used to have this at uh, office parties and uh, when we do go to the ski lodge, uh, Bob would make a big pot of hot Dr. Pepper. It was a huge trend in the 60s and all your magazines at the grocery store checkout, like a Woman's Day and Good Housekeeping and Family Circle. You could you could tear out the ad with the recipe. You usually had Dick Clark on it. You tear Dick Clark? Uh, well, not on broadcast. Ah. No, no. But but we would tear out the ad and, and, the, and the, the recipe in the ad was very simple. You just warm up some Dr. Pepper and pour it over a lemon slice. How did you have enough Dr. Peppers to warm up to have all these fleshies drink it over the years? I asked Peter Piper, okay. So, Picked no, pepper. Well, now you're, don't get me confused now, Sally, all right? So anyhow, uh, the first thing you need to do to make hot Dr. Pepper in the way that Bob always made it is of course Dr. Pepper. Now in this cooler, we have a bottle of Dr. Pepper. You see that? There it is. 23, a blend of 23 authentic flavors He's in Dr. Spicy. Pepper. And uh, now the sponsorship check did not clear. So we're not obligated to actually use Dr. Pepper in our Dr. Pepper beverage. So uh, I thought we could save a few pennies and do Dr. Thunder instead. We could just return this to the store. So you can't afford the doctor, yeah, the first year resident. I see how that works now. And you know, uh, over the counter uh, brands like this, uh, they have a, usually a money back guarantee. If you feel like it doesn't taste enough like the original, you can get your money back, a refund or equivalent. Uh, there's also, oh, a Dr. Costco and- Dr. Kmart. Yeah, uh, there's, uh, there's maybe a, a Dr. Uh, I think there's a, I think there's a Dr. Sphincter. Oh. That's a little nutty, but okay. There's a Mr. Prune, a Professor Plum. Any of these variations uh, will work. And you get a big pot and you wanna pour your, um, your, your Dr. Thunder, Dr. Pepper, uh, Dr. Equivalent into- Thunder, uh, Thunder, Thundercracker! Ho! Oh boy. So uh, what you wanna do after you put your Dr. Pepper in the pot <laughs> is you add lemons to it. I beat him to it. Yeah, you I'm cooking now. Jump the gun. Yes. All right. So you add a few lemon slices in there, and um, along with lemon. Now I usually like to boost it with a little bit of uh, lime juice as well. Put the lime and the thunder, and you mix maybe it. a half a cup of lime juice. And since there's lime in there, you might as well put uh, salt on in there too, right? That's salty. So doesn't salt go with lime? Yeah. You put it on the, the rim of the pot, right? Something or your, like your that. Hand. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, we've got whole cloves. You could put like all your Christmassy seasonings I would put in here, like your clove. So this is why zombies are kind of out of it around the holiday don't season, smoke, all the spices. Don't smoke these cloves, please. <laughs> and then these sticks, don't smoke these sticks either. This is a cinnamon stick. You put sticks in your food. Well, you know, human beings still have a little bit of the primal caveman in them and we still eat sticks sometimes. Uh, this is ginger. We put a little ginger in there. Hi, ginger. Uh, do you like ginger or Marianne? Eh, Ginger. Really? Yeah. What's wrong with Mrs. Howell? Well, she's kind of, I don't know, people jerky. Oh, okay, you know what? Mr. Howell could have 
any woman he wants in the whole world, and, and he chose Mrs. Howell, I feel like she knows something. She probably think, does, that's why he's stuck with her. I think he's got some, she's got experience. Well, we'll talk about this after the show. We'll talk, yeah. <laughs> We'll talk about it after the show. All right, all right, all right. So you want to warm up your Dr. Pepper and your lemon and all your Christmassy spices. You want to put, you know, if you feel like the stick cinnamon is not going to do the job, you can add some powdered cinnamon to that. Sticky. Uh, there's, uh, what is this now? We did the ginger already. Powdered uh, nutmeg. Stick. How about that? Put a little Meg nutmeg is naughty. in there. All right, shut up, Meg. All right, there we go. So you warm up these in a pan. Now we don't have time, certainly not on broadcast, we don't have time to warm up this Dr. Pepper with the lemon and the spices and the lime juice. But just before the show, we uh, cooked this hot Dr. Pepper up. Now the important thing with the hot Dr. Pepper- Eyeballs. Is to not boil it. Now the lemons start looking pretty nasty. They're all gray and rubbery. Gray matter. See, you might like this after all, Sally. So you, uh, you wanna go ahead and uh, stir it up there, and again, don't boil it. It turns into black tar heroin. It's nasty. Tar man. Uh, now I don't think Dr. Pepper is tar man. That's, that's where tar man comes from. I mean, we don't know who he was uh, before he was a zombie. I mean, technically, maybe Dr. Pepper turned into tar man. We don't really know. He ended up in a canister, right? Yeah. See, he's, you, you pulled him out of a canister. See, I don't know if I could drink this because that's kind of like zombie There's cannibalism. There's an emergency phone number on here that we can call, right? See. Dr. Pepper uh, had it together. So anyhow, no, I don't think, I don't think Tar Man, I don't think Tar Man, Dr. Pepper is not Tar Man. But this is basically, uh, this is what it's supposed to look like and it smells pretty good. And um, you want to put it in a mug. Now the important thing is, is you want to put it in an officially licensed mug from OSI 74 dot square dot site. We have a lot of merchandise related to our shows. We have the original uh, Cinema Insomnia mug with the Sleepless Night Eye and the Cinema Insomnia logo. We have uh, the original OSI 74 mug. These both come in 11 and 15 ounce versions. And uh, that's a lot of tar, man. <laughs> 11 and 15 ounce versions. And coming soon, we have the Drunken Cinema Insomnia mug with the uh, everything upside down. Fooled me. That might be good for you. So. Hey. And then I, uh, let's see here. Oh, and this is the, also to coming soon, the Cinema Insomnia You're Not Dreaming mug with the cartoon art from the animation in the opening. That's cool. Um, but Mr. Lobo would use that one, but Alan Smithy is gonna use this uh, OSI 74 officially licensed mug. Although, for the purposes of this, maybe we shouldn't use these mugs because we wanna, no, come on, give it, give it to me here. Well, you can go ahead and use that one, all right. All right, but I'll use the clear one so that they can see what the hot Dr. Pepper actually looks Let's like. Let's see what Dr. Pepper looks like with, out of his pot. That's right, we're gonna take a peek at the pepper. So uh, you wanna put a slice of lemon in there. Thinly sliced lemon is really important to pour it over because all the other lemons look gray and nasty. So you need a fresh slice of lemon to pour your doctor, hot Dr. Pepper over. It's gonna sting, right? <laughs> it's lemon. like lemon in the wound there. That's right. So you put a little, actually should do yours first, right? That's the gentlemanly thing to do. Perfect, yep, okay. Like that, two, three, four. Who do you think I am? All right, here we go. I'll do, I just wanna be fair. You Hello. Four, I'll get myself four. Hi, tar man. Three. He says the, the lemon hurts. All right, so there you have it. You know, you could drink it just like this, but you can add your own holiday spirit. Now you might want to add a little bit of horse and noggin. I'm not sure if you want to do that. Eh, why not? All right, okay. All this horsing around's got me thirsty. A little horse and noggin in there. And then, uh, oh, you know, and Alan Smithy enjoys uh, to add a little extra something to it. This is um, a little bit of cold medicine, horse and tussin. Now I wouldn't recommend this officially and it's probably illegal, but I like to put a dose of uh, horse and tussin in there. And uh, like I said, wouldn't recommend it, but we won't judge you either. And put that in there too. What happens when it starts steaming? Uh, hashtag drunk responsibly. Actually, we don't really care about you. But anyhow, uh, it's all ready to go. Do you, are you ready to try this? Oh, sure. All right, well, bottoms up, cheers. 
Welcome to the network. Hmm. And as for the rest of you, all systems intermission. <laughs> I hope so, boys. This is a special holiday message to moviegoers all over the world. Santa, have we ever let you down? Roll it, Eddie. <laughs> I'm Dick Clark. You know, when the weather is sunny and hot, you and I really go for a delicious ice-cold Dr. Pepper, the soft drink that goes so well with hot weather. Deliciously different. When the weather's hot, Dr. Pepper tastes great cold. And when the weather's cold, that's when Dr. Pepper tastes a great hot. Hi, Max. Good friends, Roaring fire. The perfect time for hot Dr. Pepper. Ah, delicious and so easy to prepare. Just heat Dr. Pepper in a saucepan till it steams, then pour over a thin slice of lemon. That's a hot idea. Yes, Dr. Pepper is delicious cold or hot. Try hot Dr. Pepper. It's a great winter treat. Right, Max? Hot idea. Uh, insomniac of the future, Beatrix. Hi, Beatrix. Hi. <laughs> is that your horror host persona? Yes, of course it is. Oh, wow. That's amazing. I'm getting scared. Do you, you like Sally the Zombie Cheerleader? I am Sally the Zombie Oh, you are Sally the Zombie Cheerleader. What happened is she shrunk. Someone shrunk Sally. Do you, what, what's your favorite movie, Sally? Um, probably Plan 9. Plan 9 from outer space. Now that is, that is a zombie with very uh, unique tastes. Amazing. Have you ever seen Santa Claus Conquers the Martians? Yes. Yes. Did you realize you have the robot Torg behind you right now? Oh my gosh, I got him! <laughs> oh no! No, a Torg is he's friendly now. He's a toy now. He's gonna be he's gonna be nice now. Right? Yes. Are you cold? Yes, me too! It's all system snow over here at the Shankweiler Drive-In. And uh, Sally, the zombie cheerleader junior, and her parents brought her out here. And, uh, uh, and they braved all the elements to come out to the drive-in to see Santa Claus Conquers the Martians on the big screen. That is, that, that is a special kind of family that would do something like that. Don't you think so? <laughs> All right, you want to say you're not dreaming, you're watching Cinema Insomnia, and then we'll say bye-bye? You're not dreaming, I'm watching Cinema Insomnia. Excellent.
Not Dreaming, you're watching Cinema Insomnia, and I'm here with Danny Roebuck. How crazy is that? I can't believe it. You know, anyone ever say you look a lot like Dr. Shocker? Oh, don't tell it. No, Dr. Shocker is an idiot. He hates me. I no. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. He's very unpleasant. I mean, he's a legendary horror host. In his own mind, Mr. Lobo, you're a legendary horror host. He is a pretender. He is a, a goofball. But uh, if people want to see him, they can see Halloween, The Happy Haunting of America, or The Vault of Horror. Uh, these are two DVDs that are available. They might, they might like it, you know. Well, I am a big fan of your work. I really uh, enjoyed you in uh, John Dies at the End. Oh, thank you. As the large man. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you like being called the large man? Large man. <laughs> oh, large man. Sorry, large man. <clears throat> Uh, and of course, uh, I think a lot of people might know you from The Late Shift, where you played Jay Leno. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean did you win an award or something for no, that? No, I no. I mean, I gave myself an award, <laughs> uh, but evidently that doesn't that doesn't count in Hollywood. I, they give the Oscars. I got a Felix. Anyway, I always thought Tony Randall was great. Uh, no, it, but thank thank gosh, I didn't do any of this for awards. I do it because it's what God wanted me to do. Um, so, and I've been lucky that over the course of my career. You know, it's gone from uh, things everybody watches like Lost or Man in the High Castle to uh, these wonderful obscure movies and all the Rob Zombie movies. And of course, I'm now... The obscure ones are my favorite, but now you're Grandpa Munster. Yeah, Grandpa Munster. I, yeah. And, and, and you know, it's interesting because, you know, I was thinking originally when they announced this project, I was like, how are they going to cast this? How is this going to come together? But then when they announced you as Grandpa, I'm like, well, Grandpa's, Grandpa's going to be great. Oh, thank you. And you were so great. Oh, thank and you. And I'm a big fan of the Munsters, and I was I was very tentative, uh, and I was thought, well, am I going to need to turn this down and watch it in black and white? But honestly, the bright color really grew on me. The sensibility was fantastic. I mean, I laughed out loud. Um, and I've watched it several times since. It's it's a really fun thing. Thank it, it you for does saying that. Yeah. Kind of feel like a backdoor pilot, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I wish. I hope. I will see. We'll see what God's plan is for that. Um, but uh, J you know, Jeff Dana Phillips was terrific. Sherry Moon Zombie, Rob Zombie, and Rob was the perfect guy to make it because you know why we like it? Because it's filled with everything we like. It's got Abbott and Costello. It's got Uncle Gilbert. It's got Cousin Lester. It's got all the stuff that better be in a, a, a or a Munsters movie, uh, and that 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 was great. So the tone was great. Yeah, silly. It, and it was silly. It was funny, and that's what it should be. Yeah, thank you, know? you Mr. Lobo. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm thrilled to be here. We've known each other uh, through the the the, the Monster Convention. The Monster Convention Since Horror Monster House, Circuit, maybe Monster. 15 years ago, 20 yeah, years ago. Yeah. But I'm I'm a fan too, and uh, the show uh, is so silly and fun. And uh, look, uh, I'll maybe I can come by one time. But I'm not. I'm telling you right now, Doctor Shocker's on it. I'm not going to be on the same episode. All right, we'll try to work it out to where you and Doctor Shocker are in the same place I, at the same time. He he drives me crazy. Uh, now you you made some Christmas movies too, haven't you? I do. I make Christmas movies. Grumpy Cat's worst Christmas ever. <laughs> There's a young girl out there. Maybe she's seen that. I think Trix might have seen Grumpy Pat Cat for worst Christmas. Christmas ever on Lifetime. And I, I make my own movies. I make faith-based movies, too. So people can, if they want to follow what I do, they can always find me on social media, Mr. Daniel Roebuck on Instagram or Facebook, or they can go to A Channel of Peace. A Channel of Peace. How wonderful. Dot a org. Channel of Peace. Yes. Dot org. Look for uh, Danny Roebuck for all of his uh, fun and fantastic and faith-based uh, uh, productions. Uh, we always enjoy you in everything that you're in. You're such a, a great person to hang around, a great sense of humor, and uh, all systems go for the future. All right, God bless. Thank you. Uh, we'll see you guys on the show. But not Dr. Shocker. Not, not Dr. Kidding. Shocker. I'm not I'm kidding. Write that down, Aaron. Okay, we can't have No, Dr. Shocker. I'm not kidding. Thank you. Thank you. prison once. I've been married twice. I was once drafted by Lyndon Johnson and had to live in shit ass Mexico for two and a half years for no reason. I've had my eye socket punched in, a kidney taken out, and I got a bone chip in my ankle that's never gonna heal. I've seen some pretty shitty situations in my life, but nothing has ever sucked more ass than this. 
If I'd known I was going to have to put up with a bunch of screaming brats, I would have killed myself a long time ago. Come to think of it, I still might. Where I come from, we didn't celebrate Christmas. Not because we were Jewish, but because my dad was a worthless coward and asshole whose idea of a present was a daily punch to the back of the head. My dad never did shit with his life, so he took it out on me. You could say I'm no different, and I'd have to say you were right. But at this point, it's too late to start over. Funny how things work out. It's fucking hilarious. You're not dreaming. You're watching cinema. Insomnia. <laughs> Mr. Lobo's not dreaming. He's hallucinating, an unexpected side effect from uh, a very bad flu and very good cold medicine. This is horse and tussin, very strong stuff, hashtag sponsored. Hallucinations. How else can Mr. Lobo explain the uh, ghostly yet strangely alluring image of Elvira at my bedside. It's Vampira, not Elvira, you idiot! That witch stole my whole act! But didn't you just steal it from the Adams Family cartoons? Silence! Were you in Plan 9 from Outer Space? Uh, I was in the remake. Remakes don't count, smart guy! I'm going to show you a vision. A rerun from your horror host past. not dreaming. You're watching Insomniac Theater on your local flagship broadcasting station. Sponsored by Dr. Frank's Kosher Brain Wieners. Now fortified with more gluten. Sacre bleu. You're not sexy. You're not scary. You're not even particularly funny. And what the hell is up with that bow tie? Who do you think you are? Pee Wee Airman? You're not worthy of being a whole host. Mr. Lobo is, um, unnecessarily mysterious. Uh, that's got to count for something. To top it all off, you're showing a frickin' Christmas movie. It's a Christmas carol. Uh, there's ghosts in it. Did I tell you that you could speak? Sorry, Mistress Elvira. Just play the damn movie. The money is due and must be paid. But, sir, that's impossible. Then I shall have no alternative but to take immediate steps to recover it. But, sir, you must see that if... That is the way I conduct my business. You don't mean... sell us up? That is precisely what I do mean. But, sir, I couldn't work in the hospital. Mr. Scrooge, I beg of you. Good day. You can't do this. You can't be so unjust. Give us a little more time. A week. sentiment to enter this counting house, I should be in the bankruptcy court within a year. And as for that couple who've just gone out, well, set your mind at rest about them. Worthless, shiftless pair, had my good money, now I want to avoid paying it back. 
Your money. Your good money. They asked you for a little breathing space, a little time in which to pay. That's all. Enough of this, Bill. I'm ready to make allowances for your feelings as a woman. But I must ask you to leave my business affairs alone. When you marry me, I shall insist. I'll take leave of your senses. I've tried hard not to believe what they've said about you. I'd give anything not to believe it now. But the evidence of my own eyes and ears, I must believe. You are not always so. But I can see now that my passion, and one passion only, engrosses you. Gain. But then, even if it were so, I'm not changed towards you. You are changed. Changed in every way. You're not the man. Our contract's an old one, made when we were poor and content to be so. May you be happy, alone, in the life you've chosen. this afternoon. Oh, who was it? You guess. How can I? I don't know. It wasn't Mr. Scrooge. Mr. Scrooge it was. I passed his office window, and as it was not shut up and there was a candle inside, I could scarcely help see him. His partner's on, on the point of death, I hear. And there he sat, alone. Quite alone in the world, I do believe. Spirit, I cannot bear it. Haunt me no more. I told you these were the shadows of the things that have been, that they are what they are. Do not blame me. Take me back! <sighs> Twelve o'clock, I know it is. That was terrible. Not the movie, of course, but my visitation from the ghost of 50s horror host past, Elvira. <laughs> I mean, Vampira. <laughs> was any of that real? Hundred and fourteen degrees. At least Mr. Lobo's fever is starting to come down a little. Maybe part of it was real. <laughs> Bob did say that I would get three calls tonight from other horror hosts. I do remember picking up the phone. <clears throat> or, uh, or did I pick up the phone? <coughs> was that a phone? Cinema Insomnia will return <coughs> with the greatest ghost story ever told. A Christmas Carol after this. All right, open up, put it under your tongue. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas, Mr. Lobo, bringing misunderstood movie joys to all good little girls and boys. Al's in a one hour special. Al! 
When the Tanners lose out, he makes some new friends to get back home. It's out special Christmas. Then, Philip Michael Thomas hosts an all-new Motown Merry Christmas with the Pointer Sisters, the Temptations, and many more in Motown's Merry Christmas, a night of specials Monday. From Turner Network Television and Hallmark Entertainment, A Christmas Carol. Damn you, Merry Christmas. A story of a man consumed by greed, a mind clouded by ignorance, a soul drowning in bitterness. What reason have you to be merry? You're poor. I've always thought of Christmas as a time for good, not a time for profit. Nephew, you keep Christmas in your way. Let me keep it in mine. Ebenezer, I'm here to warn you. You will be haunted by three spirits. Ah, this is all humbug. His journey will help him rediscover the spirit of Christmas, find the rewards of kindness, and bring true meaning into an empty life. I know this place. I was a boy here. There are only shadows of things that have been. They can't see us or hear us. Dawn's for us, Mr. Percival. One master passion engulfs you. Money. What of it? Our promise to marry was an old one. May you be happy in the life you've chosen. Go after her. Don't be afraid. I am the ghost of Christmas present. Tell me, Spirit, will Tiny Tim live? I see an empty chair by the fireplace. Unless the future changes, the child will die. Tell me. Was that wretched man whom we saw lying dead? Patrick Stewart, in a role he's performed in theaters across the nation. Show me no more. Take me home. Why do you delight in torturing me? And Joel Gray. These were shadows of things that have been. That they are what they are. Shadows of the things that would have been may be dispelled. They will be. Hello, not my fine fellow. Well, what's today? Why is Christmas Day? Merry Christmas, Bob. I'm gonna raise your salary. Reawaken the spirit of Christmas with the most spectacular telling of Charles Dickens' magical story, A Christmas Carol. God bless us, everyone. Coming this December, only on TNT. Merry Christmas, Mr. Lobo and Miss Mittens. Kisses from Amber Lily. <laughs> Morticia said that I don't have what it takes to be a horror host. What does she have that Mr. Lobo doesn't? <laughs> okay. Mr. Lobo can think of a couple of things. A budget and a functioning immune system. <laughs> oh, and the boobies. <laughs> and now, Cinema Insomnia returns you to Seymour Hicks as Ebenezer Scrooge in our holiday tale, our holiday tale, A Christmas Carol. More than 1,800. 
A tremendous family to provide for. Spirit, conduct me where you will. Already I have been forth under compulsion and learned the lesson which is working now. If you have aught to teach me, let me profit by it. Touch my robe. Where's our Martha? She's, um, not coming. Not coming? Not coming upon Christmas Day? <laughs> yes, Father dear, here I am. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. so much, and thinks the strangest things you ever heard. He told me, coming home, that he hoped that the people in the church saw him, because he was a cripple, and that it might be pleasant for them to remember upon a Christmas day, who made lame beggars walk and blind see. For what we are about to receive, may the Lord make us truly thankful. Amen. I can already And its favor will I know surpass my utmost expectations. Yes. With the mashed potato Ooh. and the apple sauce. It will, I am sure, present a delightful combination that we shall remember until our dying day. Yes! Delicious. Delicious. Mm. That's the best goose we ever had, Mother. Yes, indeed. Oh, yes. Mm. Oh, I've eaten too much. <laughs> and even now, we haven't eaten at all. <laughs> <laughs> you laugh. Laugh. A Merry Christmas to it all, my dear. God bless us, everyone. Spirit, tell me that Tiny Tim will live. I see a vacant seat. In the poor chimney corner, with a crutch without an owner, carefully preserved. I don't know if it's because Mr. Lobo is sick, but we're having a heck of a time trying to follow this movie. Why is Tiny Tim's chair empty? Now nah, he died! You? Get the hell out of here before you ruin Christmas! I hope he's an hallucination. Oh, oh, it looks like Mr. Lobo needs to empty out his, uh, his vomit bucket and his mucus bucket. Uh, I suggest that you at home do the same. Cinnamon Sami will be right back. Merry friggin' Christmas, Mr. Lobo. Now go away. Mr. Scrooge has been seeing more ghosts than usual this year. They are after the noose. The 
Stuffing, stuffing. It's the five-piece holiday meal deal from Kentucky Fried Chicken with two buttermilk biscuits and that delicious new stuffing for just four ninety-nine. It's meant for two. More ghosts? We've got the ten-piece holiday meal with four buttermilk biscuits and more stuffing for just nine ninety-nine. You have money up there? Get the five or ten-piece holiday meal deal at Kentucky Fried Chicken today. What's so special about Christmas? I despise Christmas. It's Christmas Eve. We're asking for one moment of kindness. Then ask Father Christmas. Time can be rewritten. People can't. Whatever happens tonight, remember, you brought it on yourself. Who are you? I'm a ghost of Christmas past. Lobo, and I just feel terrible for many reasons. Uh, we're sick. We have the dreaded sea monkey virus. Our body is seething with pathogens. <laughs> and we feel like I don't know, Mr. Lobo just feels like he can't even do his own job. I mean, maybe it's time for old Mr. Lobo to, I don't know, hang up that jock strap for good, so to speak. You know, there's already so many talented and beloved horror hosts out there. There's, I don't know, Spanguli and the son of Spanguli, who is actually Spanguli, and uh, <clears throat> Chef Goulardi, I think, and then the son of Chef Goulardi. Uh, oh, Lady Skankenstein and uh, Bride of Skankenstein. Uncle Spooky Pants, nephew of Uncle Spooky Pants. Desdemona Big Tits. Ling Ling! Uh, excuse me. Uh, hello? Bonjour, man. I mean, howdy, yippee kaye, hombre lobo. That's Mr. Lobo. Whatever, homeboy. This is American drive in movie critic and host of TV horror present, Joe Bob Briggs. Yee hey! Do you even have a show on the air right now? On the air? No. Streaming? I think I've got a show on sh there or something. It's like television for the internet. Sleazy P. Martini would have called, but he says he hates you. Oh. Well, uh, what about Sally the Zombie Cheerleader? Off eating the brains of fleshies. Oh. Uh, Dr. Sarcophagi? He's too cool for this. You're right. Oh, Bunny Galore. She's got the flu too. Also, British doesn't count. Hmm. John Stanley? Uh, you want John Stanley? I'll give you John Stanley! <clears throat> uh, uh. Oh, these hallucinations are just getting more and more real. Ooh. Uh, hello? Joe Bob? What? Wait, are we still doing these? What? Forget about it, Lobo. I am honestly shocked that you did not ask about Francois Fly. Why would I talk about him? Why? Why? Because he's so funny and so very suave. There's a lot of buzz about him. <laughs> oh, 
I get it. You're having me on. Buzz, he's a human fly. I got it. But seriously, that guy is the worst. I was not joking. Francois Fly is the most talented up and coming movie host of them all. Now I know I'm hallucinating. Cinema Insomnia now returns you to A Christmas Carol. What's wrong with Francois Fly? Tell me! I'm not listening. You son of a bitch! Toast, I give you Mrs. Cruz, the founder of the feast. The founder of the feast, indeed. I wish I had him here. I'd give him a piece of my mind to feast upon. I hope he'd have a good appetite for it. But my dear, the children, Christmas Day. It should be Christmas Day, I'm sure, on which one drinks the help of such an odious, stingy, hard, unfeeling man as Mr. Scrooge. You know he is, Robert. Nobody knows it better than you do, poor fellow. My dear, Christmas Day. Well, I'll drink his health for your sake and the day's, not his. He'll be very merry and very happy, I've no doubt. Here's Mr. Scrooge's health. Now, children, all together, Mr. Scrooge's health. Mr. Mr. Scrooge's health. Mr. Scrooge's health. And now, Tiny Tim will sing to us. Yes, yes I, I do. do sing. What shall I sing? Hark the herald in. Yes, yes hark yes. the herald in. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy. Come now, and see how others keep Christmas. to say against him. But surely he's very rich. At least you've often told me so. Well, what of that, my dear? His wealth is of no use to him. He doesn't do any good with it. He can't make himself comfortable with it. He hasn't even the satisfaction of thinking that he's ever going to benefit us with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've no patience with your Uncle Scrooge. Oh, I have. I'm sorry for him. And here, he's taken it into his head to dislike us, and he won't even come and dine with us. <laughs> Well, what are you going to play at? Riddles! Good. I'll ask you one. <coughs> what does the following represent? An animal. Rather a disagreeable animal. A savage animal. An animal that grunts and growls and talks and lives in London. But walks the streets. Yes. And isn't even made a show of? No. Doesn't have a menagerie. No. Isn't a horse. No. 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 Ha, 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 ha. 
Look, spirit, do I really, really need a special ghost to see the present? I mean, I could just walk around all day long by myself and see the present. Okay, smelty pants. Go ahead. What do you see? Well, I see Miss Mittens and all of our friends celebrating the holidays together. They're all gathered around the TV watching the better 1951 Alistair Sim version of A Christmas Carol on Blu-ray. And because you showed a Christmas film on your program, all of the young horror fans who normally watch this cinema insomnia have run out and joined the violent street gangs. Oh no, jeepers, what have I done? Jackass. Haunt me no more, spirit. Spend your holidays with USA and a special double feature of your favorite cartoon characters. First, ho, oh, ho, ho, Merry Christmas. He-Man and She-Ra, a Christmas special. Then, a holiday classic returns. God bless us, everyone. Mr. Magoo's Christmas Carol. Bah, humbug! Well, I think you're feeling the Christmas spirit. He-Man and She-Ra, a Christmas special. And Mr. Magoo's Christmas Carol, a USA special presentation. Tomorrow night, starting at 7, 6 central. It's the most wonderful time of the year With the kids jingle bells Merry Christmas! Looks like Martha Stewart threw up in here. This is delicious, honey. A little dry. Well, mine's delicious. Mine's dry. Do you want to trade? It's the It's Christmas. It's Christmas. It's Christmas. Look at oh! With those holiday greetings and greetings. How are we were gonna survive Christmas with 12 people stuck in a house with no heat and no electricity? Or food. There's plenty of leftovers, Howard. Beer it is. It's the weirdest thing. There's no cars, no people. How long can this keep up? We heard something on the roof. What the hell is this? Saint Nicholas is not coming this year. Instead, a much darker ancient spirit. Those are hooves. Elk? Or a goat? What kind of goat walks on its hind legs? His name is Krampus. He and his helpers did not come to give, but to take. Everybody, hold on to each other. He is the shadow of Saint Nicholas. I know who this is. O oh, TV host of Horror Future. I fear you most of all. Yeah? You ought to fear me, Lobol! That's 
Mr. Lobo. Like I even care. Here's the deal. If you stay on this path, you'll die pathetic and alone in a room full of Star Wars action figures. Really? Will there be a vinyl cape Jawa? What, what about a rocket launching Boba Fett? Give it up, Lobo. With you out of the picture, my show, Fly by Night Theater, with Francois Fly, will get the ratings it needs so I can pay my back child support for my four million maggots. Ugh. Uh, no offense, Mr. Lobo had a bad experience with maggots once. Well, you're about to have another one with four million hungry ones. That's a lot of mouths to feed. Damn straight, Lobo. I ain't going to deadbeat daddy prison on account of some hoity-toity dork in a monkey suit. Do you know what they do to smooth flies like me in prison? Have you ever been swatted, Monsieur Lobo? Ghost of the future, I fear you more than any specter I have seen. You are about to show me shadows of the things that have not been, but will be in the time to come. And as I hope to live to be another man from what I was, I am prepared to bear you. I don't know much about it either way. I only know he's dead. When did he die? Last night, I believe. Why, what was the matter with him? I thought he'd never die. <laughs> Heaven knows. What's he done with his money? Left it to his company, perhaps. He hasn't left it to me. That's all I know. <laughs> how are you? Very well. well. How are you? So old Nick has got his own at last. Yes, so I'm told. <laughs> told, isn't it? Seasonable for Christmas time. Oh, yeah. You're not a skater, I suppose. Oh, no, no. I've got something else to think about. <laughs> I do not see myself in my accustomed place. Where am I? Why am I not there? staring as if you were afraid, woman. Who's the worst for the loss of a few things like this? Not a dead man, I hope. Big curtains. Ah, <laughs> bed curtains. You don't mean to say you took them down, rings and all, with him lying there? Why not? You was born to make your fortune, <laughs> and you will certainly do it. <laughs> Here, don't drop the oil on the blanket. His blanket? Whose else's? He's likely to take cold without them, I dare say. <laughs> I hope he didn't die of anything catching. Oh, don't you be afraid of that. Ah, you can look through that shirt until your eyes ache and you won't find a hole in it. It's the best he had. It'd have been wasted if it hadn't been for me. What do you call wasting of it? Putting it on him to be buried in, to be sure. I took it off him. <laughs> <laughs> Calico's just as for coming to the body. <laughs> he couldn't have looked uglier than he did in that one. <laughs> 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 I see, I see. The case of this unhappy man might be my own. My life tends that way now. Merciful heavens! What is that? Is this the man they spoke of? 
neglected, robbed, hated. Can you not show me some tenderness connected with death? Father at the door. Well, my dear. Well, Father. Well. Ah. Well. My dear, you have been quit. It'll be done long before Sunday. Sunday? You went today then, Robert? Yes, my dear. I've seen where our tiny Tim is to rest. It had done you good to see how green a place it is. Hmm. Oh, you see it often. I promised him that we would walk there over Sunday. Okay, TV host of horror future, Mr. Lobo has seen over 74,000 versions of A Christmas Carol, and I know whose name is on that tombstone. Don't torment me any longer. Miss Mittens? You became such a workaholic that no one remembers to water her. And so she just dries up and, and dies? Well, she drinks herself to death on cheap bourbon in a seedy motel room. But you get the picture. No! We? Oui. That's it. Mr. Lobo is quitting. No TV show is worth this. Please. Please, tell me that this is just one possible outcome that can be changed. You know, like in the Back to the Future movies. You really are a dark, aren't you? Yeah, pretty much. Listen, you go ahead and run on home and have your little Muppet family Christmas with your so-called friends and your drunken little houseplant. I'll toss you commercial for you. Thank you. Thank you, Spirit. I take back most of the things I've said about you. Thank you. It's my pleasure, Mr. Loser. <laughs> Dumbass. Oh, I went for Xmas in Cinema Insomnia. It starts Vader, watch out! And he's got a lightsaber. It's Kenner's Star Wars action figures, each sold separately. I got you now, Ben Kenobi. With R2-D2 and C-3PO. There's even Chewbacca and Han Solo. Someone's coming, Chewie. Who's there? It's Princess Leia and Luke Skywalker. Now I know the Force is with us. Darth Vader, R2-D2, C-3PO, and other Kenner Star Wars action figures, each sold separately. 7 o'clock, Psycho sees Santa's workshop, and only Lee Majors can stop them in the night the reindeer die. 
be here. Well, you can't show that commercial. That thing looked like a, the, the Manson family Christmas special. Think I'm way off base? Yes, you're, well, you're a tad off base, sir. Frank Cross is more than the youngest network president in television history. Call security, have them change his locks and toss him out of the building. Oh, he's fired? It's Christmas. Thank you. Call the county. Stop his bonus. Watch out. Ah! He's a thoughtful boss. Thanks, boys. Get the nurse. A generous brother. What did he give you last year? Uh, I don't remember. A shower curtain. Did you hear him? I think you dropped something here. And a true humanitarian. I can't get the antlers glued onto this little guy. We tried crazy glue. Have you tried staples? But his life is about to change. That was a good one. You are going to be visited by three ghosts tomorrow at noon. God, tomorrow's bad for me, Lou. As a matter of fact, the whole rest of the week is a washout. Anyone who thinks he hates Christmas is wrong. Look out! Go back to Jersey, you moron! It's ghosts he hates. Bill Murray. Karen Allen. It sounded like you'd seen a ghost. A ghost? John Forsythe. Bobcat Goldthwaite. Hey! You do to see me or is this a shotgun in your pocket? <laughs> you know this one? Everybody knows this one. Let's go now. Yeah, does everybody know this one? <laughs> Carol Kane. Robert Mitchum. I really care. David Johansson. Oh, I'm having the weirdest day. This holiday season, see Bill Murray get Scrooged. Hey, back off, big man. I may work with the checks, but not with me. Wishing Mr. Lobo and the entire gang at Cinema Insomnia a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. <gasps> oh. Mr. Lobo's fever must have broke. I feel better suddenly. I don't just feel better. I feel like a brand new Mr. Lobo. Mm -hmm. Wow, I can't waste any more time here. I'm sorry to you all, but there are just some things more important than hosting movies, like spending time with the ones that you love. We've had a good 20 years or so run, haven't we? But, oh, I'll submit my formal resignation later. My family is waiting for me. They're probably all at home right now watching Reel 10 of A Christmas Carol. Now, Spirit, tell me. What man that was, whom we saw lying dead. Nearer to the stone at which you point, tell me, are these the shadows of the things that will be? Or are they the shadows of the things that may be only? Ebenezer Scrooge! Man who lay upon the bed. No, spirit, no. I'll not be the man I was. I'll not be the man I must have been but for this intercourse. 
Why show me this if it is all too late? Tell me I may sponge away the writing on this stone. I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year. I will live in the past, the present, and the future. The spirits of all three shall strive within me. I will not shut out the lessons that they teach. No, no. No. Jacob Marley, heaven and Christmas time be praised for this. I thank you. On my knees, I thank you, Jacob. On my knees. No, oh. oh. they're not torn down. They're not torn down. Mr. Lobo is home, home for the holidays. Oh, forget about a Christmas carol. Mr. Lobo's done hosting movies for good. How will we make ends meet? I mean, were we really making ends meet before? I guess Mr. Lobo could sell all of his films on the internet. Look, I don't want to think about earning money right now. I just want to focus on enjoying this joyous holiday Call up all of Mr. Lobo's friends, all of them. Get them all here. What do you mean they're here? What about Romana? Off world for Roman Life Day. All right. Babs? No answer. Cogarella. She's washing her hair, of course. Oh, 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 what about Paul? Oh, he's not back up in that cave in the mountains. Aaron? Dead. Yeah, he wishes. 
Well, at least all of Mr. Lobo's real friends are here. Yeah, my real friends, like uh, Puddles. Hi, Puddles. And, uh, oh, Broken Pee Wee and that uh, Nutcracker, Scary Nutcracker from the one show. And, uh, oh, Oversized Funko Pop Skeletor. Salute, Admiral Snack Bar. Oh, looks like someone uh, knocked your paper hat off. I'm glad to see the, the rumors of your death are highly exaggerated. Half-transformed Grimlock, I hardly saw you there. I'm really surprised you showed up. Oh, oh, Jar Jar, you're back. No hard feelings, I hope. Oh, oh, what's this in Mr. Lobo's pocket? Oh, oh, whoa, whoa, Zuzu's petals. Oh, oh, whoa, whoa, look, Miss Mittens, look at that. Oh, why am I talking like this? Merry Christmas. Ooh. If you're not dreaming, we're wishing you Happy Holidays, Mr. Lobo! From your Rocky Horror cast, Creatures of the Narrow. It's the clauses, everybody. Have a chicken McNugget. Don't worry, it's under 63 calories. <laughs> Rudy, be a dear and open another 20 pack. McDonald's Chicken McNuggets 20 pack makes every holiday party happy and fun. Aren't we having fun? Mingle, mingle. Tiny Tim, tiny as ever. Take two. It's a good time <laughs> for the great taste of McDonald's. Time for McDonald's gift certificates. 50 cents each or a book of 10 for $5. Beneath the city of New York are living catacombs, an endless maze of subterranean tunnels, unfit for anything human, unauthorized for anything experimental, Hold it! The stop moving up ahead at the top! and unlikely to bring anyone down there. So, <laughs> they're coming up. Chud. Chud. Check your basement and your bathroom. Keep off the street and try to hide. But remember, the dark is their place. The night is their time. And tomorrow, the only things living in the city of New York will be Chud. Chud. Cannibalistic, humanoid, underground dwellers. Chud. They're not staying down there anymore. great sitting around togetherness eating and and drinking sitting around. I'm drinking some more. <clears throat> this is just great. <coughs> great. Hey, hey, uh, why don't we, um, why don't we do something? No, no talking politics. And we're not watching Home Alone, not ever. <sighs> presents, presents, we can open our presents. Um, I have gifts for you all, that's right. Uh, I, uh, 
I left them back at the studio. So, uh, so you just uh, sit tight, okay? Uh, Mr. Lobo will be right back, all right? Okay? All right, be right back. He's still not coming back. Ah, uh, Merry Christmas, my dear. Thank you, sir. The same to you. Ah, good day, gentlemen. Uh, Merry Christmas to you. I hope you succeeded yesterday. Mr. Scrooge. Yes, that's my name. I would say it's not a very pleasant one for you, but will you allow me to ask your pardon? And would you be good enough to put me down? Oh, bless my soul. My dear Mr. Scrooge, are you serious? A round hundred. Yes, and not a farthing less. Not oh, a farthing dear, less. Sir. I'm afraid there are many back payments included oh, in this. Oh, my dear Mr. Scrooge. Yes. You come round and see me. You we will come will. round. Oh, we, we will. will. Oh, we will. Thank, thank you. Will. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bless you, gentlemen. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that won't come and dine with you? Uncle Scrooge! Oh. Oh. <laughs> Still, what's the consequence? He won't do as much of a dinner. Oh. Indeed! Well, I think he'll lose a very good dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Your master in, my dear? Yes, sir. Can I see him, my love? He's in the dining room, sir. I'll show you in. He, he knows me. He, he knows me. <laughs> you sit there. Fred. Bless my soul, who's this? It is I, your Uncle Scrooge. I've come to dinner. Will you let me in, Fred? Why, it's Uncle Scrooge. It can't be. Will I? A Merry Christmas to you, Uncle. Come in. Come in and join us. Welcome, Uncle. And a Merry Christmas. Thank you, my dear. A Merry Christmas to you all. A Merry Christmas. So I did. I come here at this time of day. I'm very sorry, sir. I am behind my time. I think you are, sir. I think you are. It's only one thing here, sir. It shan't be repeated. I was making rather merry yesterday, sir. So I tell you what it is, my fine fellow. I'm not going to stand it any longer. And therefore, 
Therefore, I'm Jim. going to raise your salary. Sir, you must be joking. Never more serious in all my life, Bob. I'm going to raise your salary. And as for tiny things, I'll be a second father to you. Oh, God, thank you. Yeah, no more work today, Bob. No work today. Make haste to your family, Bob. They've been wanting you today, Bob. They've been wanting you today. A Merry Christmas, Bob. A Merry Christmas. My good fellow and I have given you for many a year. Go on now. Go on. Merry Christmas to all the world. Happy New Year to everyone. God bless us all. God bless us everyone. Get out of here. Go spend the holiday with your four million maggots. Finally, Mr. Lobo is back with his real family, where he belongs. Imagine the nerve of a guy like that trying to take over your show. I mean, who would want to do that? <laughs> Uh, you finished? Pretty much. My scarf, please. Thank you. Well, that was inspiring. If you enjoyed tonight's holiday feature, well, that's really too bad, because in the coming weeks, your horror host is going to be bringing you films like Chainsaw Debutantes, Cyborg Kickboxer 3D, and the Mexican wrestling trilogy, El Santo escapes from Bigfoot Island, El Santo rides the ghost ship Titanic, and El Santo versus the blood-sucking lawyers. Accept them as belated holiday gifts to you, Mr. Lobo's real family. God bless us, everyone. With a lineup like that, we're gonna need it. Thanks for watching Cinema Inside. Are those supposed to be ghosts because isn't the cowboy guy still alive? Please stop talking. Happy Hanukkah!